We can send our army to Ukraine against Russia. We don't want to draw the war between Russia and Ukraine into Russia and NATO. Yes, two different statements, two different leaders. The words belong to the presidents of two eternal rivals in Europe. So which sentence could belong to which leader? After Macron stated that sending troops to Ukraine was necessary, he faced loud criticism from within the EU. NATO, Polish and Swedish leaders successively made statements on the issue. This activity should be considered in conjunction with Macron's past statements about the need for an EU NATO. In 2016, when former US President Trump took office, he shifted to isolationist policies and toughened his stance on NATO. In a campaign meeting in January 2024, he even said, I can tolerate Russia punishing countries that do not pay their dues to NATO. How will the troops departing from Paris reach Ukraine? The prolongation of the Russia-Ukraine war has revealed that European leaders have failed to direct the momentum in arms production in Europe and have been late in expanding production lines. Macron is a supporter of a series of policies aimed at making Europe less dependent on the US and other international partners in defense matters. This means either completely ending or minimizing the purchase of weapons from outside the EU bloc. Is he the new Napoleon Bonaparte? Is he a leader trying to throw his country in front of Russia? What is the structure of his army? How many aircraft does he have? What is the status of his navy? Are his tanks ready for a new frontline battle? Or is France in the 21st century, a giant in terms of defense industry, understanding that warfare is not just fought between soldiers? Before we start the video, I have a small request. In addition to subscription button, our join feature has been activated. By joining our channel, you can access special privileges. In this episode of our Modern Army series, we will talk about France. I'm Sinan Bakiolu. If you've secured the safety catch, let's begin. Let's start by explaining the conscription system. After former President Jacques Chirac announced that the army would become fully professional in February 1996, the conscription system began to undergo changes. Military recruitment was gradually reduced between 1996 and 2001. In 2001, compulsory military service was completely abolished. However, there is an important detail to mention. French young men and women are still required to register with the French army for military purposes, even in peacetime. The purpose of this is to quickly identify the human resources of the army and to rapidly carry out military recruitment in case of need. In 1998, Chirac established the Defense and Citizenship Force. It was mandatory for both men and women. We can summarize this as a certificate program. Through this certificate, one could obtain a university degree in France, obtain a driver's license, or it was a prerequisite for becoming a civil servant in the French bureaucracy. Later, this was abandoned. Between 1998 and 2010, this program was called the Defense Preparedness Program. In 2019, President Macron introduced the Service National Universel, Universal National Service. Let's detail this. It's a program applied to all French men and women aged 16 to 25. Disadvantaged individuals can also be assigned to this service. A one-month voluntary service can be carried out in civilian or military facilities. The aim of the civilian application was to pass on French values to the younger generation, strengthen social cohesion within society, and promote social participation. Those enlisted in the service must wear camouflage or uniform like soldiers. The use of cell phones is prohibited. Accommodation is provided in designated places for a month. The daily routine is as follows. Flag ceremonies and singing of the French national anthem are conducted in the mornings, followed by first aid courses. Lessons on behavior in traffic, social etiquette, and community behavior rules are taught. Additionally, a daily orienteering session led by armed forces personnel, involving map reading and strategy lessons, is included. Practical training on how the community should respond in an emergency situation is also provided. For example, what to do in case of a bomb explosion in Paris or a terrorist attack to prevent widespread panic in the community. Half of the training program follows this structure. The remaining half is spent in a non-profit organization, military, police force, or fire department. After 2026, there were discussions about expanding the age definition for this program. Macron currently rejects this idea. However, like the program during Chirac's era, it could become one of the conditions for university education or obtaining a driver's license in France in the future. Let's start with the structure of the army. It operates as four separate forces, the army, the navy, the air and space force, and the gendarmerie. Additionally, we need to include the French Foreign Legion in the list. Only French men can join this structure. Men aged between 17.5 and 39.5, regardless of nationality, can become members of the French Foreign Legion under a five-year contract. These soldiers are referred to as legionnaires. 
Let's detail this. Established in 1831 by King Louis-Philippe, its purpose was to create an additional force to support the army during the occupation of Algeria. Its initial members were primarily refugees resulting from expansionist policies. During basic training, new legionnaires are given the traditional white cap called the Kepi Blanc during an impressive torchlight ceremony. After three years of training and service, legionnaires can apply for French citizenship. The legionnaires were also used in France's colonial operations in Africa. President Macron represents the supreme command of the French army. As the head of state, he is the sole and highest ranking authority empowered to order a nuclear strike. The defense minister is Sébastien Lecornu, and the chief of staff is Thierry Burkhardt, who has served in various positions in France's overseas military missions for an extended period. He has also been present in Iraq, Afghanistan, former Yugoslavia, Chad, and Gabon. Due to his success in these areas, he holds the Croix de la Valeur Militaire, Cross of Military Valor, medal. As of 2023, 1.9% of the gross domestic product is spent on defense. In 2018, this rate was 1.8%. It increased to 2% in 2020. However, between 2020 and 2023, a rate of 1.9%. It is estimated that there are approximately 210,000 soldiers. Of these, 120,000 are members of the army, 35,000 serve in the navy, and 40,000 are in the French Air Force. It is estimated that about 15,000 personnel are in support roles. Additionally, 100,000 people serve as gendarmes. Let's continue with the doctrine of the army. It has a long history, a large number in terms of personnel, and a professional structure. Five main strategic functions are identified, anticipation, prevention, deterrence, protection, and intervention. Among the duties and responsibilities of the army is to protect French territory, population, and state interests. It also involves ensuring France's mission within NATO, ensuring the security of the European continent, and participating in international peace operations under the United Nations framework. France has the largest army in the European Union and ranks third in NATO after the US Army and the Turkish Armed Forces. In recent years, it has been part of international coalitions established in regions such as Africa, the Middle East, and the Balkans. We will detail France's presence in Africa in the later parts of the video. It is estimated that there are approximately 30,000 soldiers deployed worldwide. Large-scale exercises are regularly conducted. Additionally, new threat perceptions and mission definitions in the fields of cyber and space security have been added to the National Security Strategy document. The Army and the state classify the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, Daesh, and Al-Qaeda as terrorist organizations. Especially Daesh, the terrorist organization, had carried out numerous terrorist attacks in France in the recent past. In 2015, Daesh had launched successive attacks. We can cite examples such as the Petit Cambodge, Bataclan Theatre, and explosions at the exit of the France-Germany national match at the France Stadium. These attacks were carried out simultaneously on November 13, 2015. Prior to this, the Charlie Hebdo attack had also occurred. I would like to share an anecdote. It was found that the Daesh cells used the PlayStation Network to communicate during these attacks. This platform is a communication network where players using PlayStation consoles can talk to each other verbally and in writing while playing multiplayer games. It operates on a similar principle to Discord and TeamSpeak. The year 2015 was recorded as a difficult year for the French army and state. Which equipment do they use? Continuing with the question, they prefer the AMX-56 Leclerc tanks as their main battle tanks. These were introduced into service in 1993. The French army also utilizes them in the United Arab Emirates and Jordan. With data from 2022, the unit cost is 16 million euros. They possess protection against nuclear, biological, chemical, and radioactive attacks. Additionally, they can defend against threats from low-flying aircraft. Various types of armored fighting vehicles are used, including the Draga, VBCI, VAB, Griffin, VBMR, l Servo, AMX-10RC, EBRC Jaguar, Buffalo, and Nexta Aravis. For self-propelled artillery, the AMX-30, AUF-1, and Caesar are preferred. Additionally, an order has been placed for 33 new-generation Caesar systems. The LRU Melars takes its place in the inventory for rocket power. As for ground aviation elements, attack helicopters are used, with 77 Eurocopter Tiger Tap series being preferred. The NH-90 model, manufactured by NHN Industries, is also in service with French pilots. The Aerospatial Puma is also available for the transfer of French soldiers to hotspots. An order has been placed for 80 Airbus H-160s as well. Aerospatial Gazelle model helicopters are also used for attack purposes. Thanks to evolving drone technologies, the French army can receive air support faster when needed. They utilize MQ-9 Reaper, Segem Spurwer, Saffron Patroller, Eads Drac, Thales Spy Ranger, ECA IT-180 Drogon, and Novadem NX-70 drones. Additionally, the Black Hornet Nano 3 model mini drone is also in service. Let's continue with the French Air Force and Space Force. Dassault Rafale fighter jets produced by Dassault are used in counter-terrorism operations. 
Additionally, the Mirage 2000 is preferred as a fighter aircraft. The Boeing E3 Sentry aircraft is used in the AWACS, Airborne Warning and Control System, for airborne early warning and control. For transport and logistics purposes, Airbus A400M Atlas, Lockheed C-130J Super Hercules, and Lockheed C-130 Hercules aircraft soar in the skies. They use Airbus helicopters for helicopters. It was shared that 40 Airbus H-160M helicopters are in the order stage. Two H-225 Airbus helicopters are also used. Let's continue with air defense systems. Eight Euro Sam Samp T Mamba batteries and ten Thales Crotal NG systems defend the French mainland. Moving on to the Navy, France operates not only in its continental shelf but also in international waters. One significant aspect of France's current nuclear deterrence comes from its Navy. They use submarines with the capability to launch nuclear warhead-tipped missiles. There are four Triumphant-class submarines. These submarines can launch either conventional missiles or nuclear warheads if chosen. Additionally, there are two Suffren-class nuclear attack submarines in use. Three Rubies-class submarines are also part of the fleet, although they are slightly older in terms of production compared to other models. The first one joined the Navy in 1983, while the latest was in 1993. Production was halted due to budget cuts in France after the Cold War. There is one aircraft carrier named Charles de Gaulle. It bears the name of the national hero and former President de Gaulle, who played a crucial role in France's recovery after World War II and the eradication of Nazi remnants from the country. During his tenure from 1958 to 1969, he advocated for France to possess nuclear power and equipped its military with nuclear capabilities. For amphibious warfare capabilities, three Mistral-class ships are used. Two Horizon-class, eight Aquitaine-class, and one Amiral Ronach-class destroyers are among the prominent warships of the French Navy. Five Lafayette-class and six Florial-class frigates are also preferred for defense and attack purposes. In the realm of naval aviation, 41 Dassault Rafale aircraft manufactured by Dassault operate in France's maritime and beyond maritime borders. Within the scope of military doctrine, special importance is given to maritime and naval aviation. For this purpose, 27 NH-90 Cayman Marine helicopters, 49 Airbus H-160M Gepard, which are in the order stage, and one Airbus H-160 are utilized. Five more have been ordered. Lastly, 16 Eurocopter A565 Panther, AS365 Dauphin, and 22 Aerospayal Alouette 3 helicopters are also part of the French naval aviation. After examining the equipment and munitions used by the Army, let's take a look at some of France's moves in international relations and global politics. We will also shed light on ongoing projects. The localization project for munitions, which will continue between 2019 and 2025, is ongoing. In this century, where the importance of asymmetric warfare and extensive information networks is emphasized, it has become apparent that conventional warfare methods are still relevant, particularly with the Russia-Ukraine war. France stands among the countries providing the most significant support to Ukraine. It has sent numerous critical munitions and equipment to Ukraine, including Leclerc tanks, a substantial number of Caesar howitzers, and Shadow Storm missiles. After these assets are lost on the battlefield, there is a need to replace them with new ones. Currently, four Caesar units can be produced per month, with a goal to increase this to eight units by mid-2024. Let's transition to France's Africa policy. Before embarking on his Africa tour in 2023, Macron mentioned the New Africa Initiative program. He stated that the term France-Afrique would be abolished, the number of military bases on the continent would be reduced, and some cultural artifacts belonging to Africans but displayed in France would be returned. The Macron administration has faced significant failures in Africa, particularly in politics and economics, including counter-terrorism efforts. Ultimately, former French colonies, long oppressed under French colonial and neo-colonial policies, have expressed their dissatisfaction through protests and attempted coups. Examples include Gabon, Niger, and Burkina Faso. Mali and Burkina Faso no longer consider French as their official language. Although the French army withdrew entirely from Mali and the Central African Republic in 2022, it maintains military presence in neighboring countries through projects such as the Karimbe Mission and the Barkhane Operation. In 2019 and 2020, the West African Economic and Monetary Union, WAIMU, abolished the CFA franc, a currency used in former French colonies for 74 years. It's alleged that France faced problems in uranium supply from Niger as its power waned in the country. This is significant because 20% of France's uranium needs came from Niger. Let's conclude with an editorial comment. Even though asymmetric warfare is prevalent today, we can still see that conventional methods prevail in the Russia-Ukraine crisis. The French army holds a superior position in terms of equipment and military capacity compared to most countries in the world. However, it lacks concrete combat experience in war logistics and management.
With the need to replace the ammunition sent to Ukraine and the increasing negative statements from various countries within the EU regarding this crisis, it seems challenging for France to confront Russia alone. Moreover, if war were to be declared against Russia, it could likely lead to a major nuclear catastrophe, with NATO and Russia facing each other, risking the future of the world if either side were to initiate hostilities. I await your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to GZT for more content like this. Thank you for watching. We can send our army to Ukraine against Russia. We don't want to draw the war between Russia and Ukraine into Russia and NATO. Yes, two different statements, two different leaders. The words belong to the presidents of two eternal rivals in Europe. So which sentence could belong to which leader?